Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video. Today I have with me on my right, Elin Zazueta Hall. She's the Director of Product Management for Enphases Energy Management Systems from California. And on my left, I have Thomas Lee. He is the Senior Product Manager for the Enphase Systems. Welcome both to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So probably the quickest and easiest thing to start off with is what is Enphase Energy? So Enphase Energy is uh, primarily known as a microinverter company. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what a microinverter is, let me show you one. Sure. It's one of these guys, and they sit underneath each solar panel mm -hmm. in a PV system, yep. and they're converting DC from the solar panel into AC that you can use in your house. Yep. But uh, what's really cool is this is almost like a little computer got a microprocessor, it's really sophisticated power electronics. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're called Enphase Energy and not Enphase Solar. Because with this technology, with the fact that it can communicate uh, to our gateway and up to the internet, uh, we can provide a comprehensive energy management system. So it's not just about having solar panels that feed energy into the, the grid, but it's about understanding the power consumption in your home, understanding uh, what each individual panel can do. It's, it's, it's a lot more in depth than just solar panels, right? That's exactly right. And how would you describe it, Thomas? Uh, I would say exactly that, and so not just solar panels, but now also uh, energy storage and energy management as well. So energy, energy generation by the panels, but energy management and energy storage, which is that little battery down there, is the, um, that's the key differentiator between Enphase and the flood of solar panel companies that we've seen over the past few years. Yeah, in fact, Enphase technology works with a wide variety of solar panels. The solar panels do a great job harvesting the energy from the sun, yeah. but you need the microinverter technology to turn it into something you can use. Sure, and people currently, uh, I mean, I know for, with my parents, they've got the, the normal switch and they have this giant inverter that's showing the, the solar um, being generated, mm -hmm. and that has got cables coming from the solar panels. When you say microinverter, you're talking about an inverter for each solar panel, which is a lot more efficient and much safer with energy in the home, That's right? right. That's yeah. right. So the microinverters, they sit on the roof, behind the panels. They're connected to the panels individually. They optimize the energy collection from each uh, panel individually. That, I mean, and then the energy that's produced, the voltage that's produced, is the same as what's already running inside your house. Um, that leads to, uh, again, much, a much safer configuration and then also much higher energy production because everything, again, is optimized individually. And it's kind of like a decentralized system because of all the inverters are with each of the panels as opposed to having you come to one central inverter. And That's that, correct. And that enables you to have fewer points of failure too. So if one inverter goes down for whatever reason, the rest of the system is still going. Right. You know, essentially, you have a number of independent systems. So let's say you have you know, 20 panels on your roof or 10 panels on your roof. What you have is essentially 10 or 20 independently functioning solar PV systems. Sure. Now with this battery, just hold it up again. Normally this is, you were saying before, 25 kilos, so it wouldn't be as easy to, to lift as that. But um, these, these batteries here, they're not designed to deliver uh, off the grid style power if you've had a, a, um, a power outage for a week, as we were having in Australia with the Central Coast uh, situation a few couple of months ago. And, you know, power was out for a week and a half. People were sort of wondering what was going on. This is not designed for that, or at least not yet. It's designed for... Uh, it's designed for... Uh, peak shaving, load shaping, and really just uh, optimizing energy costs. So what that means is in the mornings and the evenings when the tariffs are higher because the energy companies know that you're using uh, hair dryers and, and washing machines and you know baths and all the rest, the power is, is coming from what you've stored in these batteries at a much cheaper cost because it was generated at a much cheaper time as, as opposed to um, that not being the case where you don't have this energy generation and you're paying that much higher cost. That's absolutely correct. So what the storage system does is that it takes the uh, energy that you've produced during the middle of the day, perhaps, uh, for example, when you're not home and not using that much electricity, yep. it stores it so that you can use it later uh, when you come home and the, you know, the sun's gone down. Even though the power rates are still high, your electricity is still free. Sure. And, and that's the, that also is the big key difference between this and most solar systems, which simply don't have any energy storage. That's correct. So what makes this different from what Tesla's doing, Ella, you know, with their power wall? Sure. In uh, a nutshell. In a nutshell, it's really the microinverter technology that makes the difference. So each of these, uh, we call them AC batteries, which mm -hmm. is a bit of a misnomer because 
uh, instead of having a bunch of separate batteries and an inverter and all this DC wiring, mm -hmm. um, you've got a self-contained unit. So inside this battery, there's a micro inverter. Yeah. Okay. And that's in there so that each little 1.2 kilowatt hour building block can function independently, bringing all the benefits that we bring to solar to storage. But, and, and does it also mean that... Um, it can be the system. I mean, I understand that the Tesla power wall is it's like seven kilowatts or something. So it's not as um, efficient as this because this can be scaled to be useful in a smaller situation or to a larger situation anywhere in between. Exactly. It's like Lego bricks, yeah. right? Where you can you can build what you need. You're not stuck with one massive size uh, battery, yeah. right? It's it's 1.2 kilowatt hour building blocks that then you can scale to the specific needs and really tailor the system to an individual home. Now I understand that this is being launched globally in Australia first and that's because we are big users of energy and we have the same sort of energy problems that like California or the rest of the world has. I would actually say Australia's ahead. Yeah. Um, what we've seen uh, in Australia is the economics for storage make more sense here than just about anywhere else. Um, partly because of what's going on with the tariffs. Uh, people want to use and get benefit. They've installed PV systems and they want to get the benefit of that. They don't just want to feed that in for almost nothing back. Yeah. And um, that's actually one of the other things that's really different about the end phase storage solution is you can take this and you can put this on somebody else's PV system. So, so if you have an existing solar, solar setup, you can augment it by adding right. the batteries exactly to that. Right. Right. And yeah. that system doesn't have to be uh, one that was manufactured by Enphase. It can yeah. be anybody's uh, solar system. Like PV a plug system. and play solution where you supply the batteries and also the management software, mm -hmm. but you're using somebody else's panels. Yeah, about really as, about as plug and play as you can get. Obviously, for yeah. safety reasons, you'll need to have a qualified <laughs> yeah. electrician and install it. But uh, the idea here is that it is AC coupled. Yeah. So you can. Uh, you can uh, retrofit it to any existing PV system out there. Um, you don't need to replace inverters. Uh, you don't need to you know, do any additional uh, design. You just need to figure out how much storage do you need. So just only just two or three more questions. I know we're running short on time. Um, what is the average cost of a system? Obviously, it's going to be d different depending on whether it's one bedroom or five bedrooms. And you know, But what's the sort of average cost and the average... Uh, return on investment and the average saving that a household can expect obviously with the caveat that everyone's situation will be different and you, That can be calculated by talking to your installers And then the other question I wanted to ask until I think of some other ones um, <laughs> in the last minute or two that we have is which power companies in Australia are you launching with? So I may start with the uh, the last uh, yep. the last one first so we are announcing a, a beta partnership uh, with uh, uh, SA Power Networks uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be trialing uh, some the early versions of our uh, of our product uh, when they come out next year, mm -hmm. um, and we're you know very much looking forward to working with them. Uh, we will have other partners uh, that we are in discussions with, and we'll announce those in due course. So, in theory, within the next year or so, you could reliably contact your um, local power company. In theory, I mean, it could take a bit longer and get the system installed. But until y your power company or one that's in your area that services you offers this. You have to wait for the trials to, to have finished first. Uh, so no, it's not something where we we'll necessarily offer it through the power companies. It's the uh, we will offer it through our existing uh, sales channels. So uh, you know uh, distributors and uh, solar retailers uh, who are carrying Enphase now or decide to carry Enphase uh, between now and then uh, will have access to this. And, and this might actually give some of those solar installers a, a boost of life. I mean, I know we have still have um, feed-in tariffs and things that are mm -hmm. there federally, but for some people it's gone down. So this is a good opportunity for some of those to upgrade those systems. Uh, certainly. I think that if you are in a situation where uh, you're on one of those feed-in tariffs that's expiring at the end of next year, uh, you know, storage may be something that's right for you. I think that you obviously need to uh, consider your own situation, uh, but... Uh, certainly, you know, we, we've timed this launch to coincide with that, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to serving you know, customers with those sorts of uh, situations. Yeah. So I don't know who wants to answer, but I, I, either of you can. But let's say you've got no panels at all, and you've heard about the system, and so we, you know, the average cost of 
um, the average cost and the average ROI and the average power saving. I mean, I know what the figures are because I've been in your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say them. But So I'll, I'll give you the figures yeah. uh, again with the disclaimer that yeah. you already gave that it really depends on the individual situation, sure. who your installer is and everything else. But on average, you're looking at maybe... 12k ish 12 to 15 thousand dollars yeah yeah for a system which is what people would have paid just for solar panels just not too long ago right and uh, and that's without all the extra storage and other bits and pieces that you know the monitoring that you offer exactly yeah. right and so that's going to uh sorry and then i lost uh, the, okay. of the rest and so, of the question yeah yeah so it's 12 <laughs> to fifteen thousand for an average system, average system that would give you how many of these battery packs one or two of them probably or? Um, probably two to three two i would say yeah. yep yeah, and that which would be more than enough for the average home mm -hmm. to, to um, you know, shape that uh, morning and evening peak into mm -hmm. cheaper rates, and then uh, wasn't it twenty to thirty percent average savings on your on your quarterly on bill? On the electricity bill, yeah. yeah. That's is that quarterly or monthly, or, or I suppose it's the uh, both. whatever your yeah, whatever your rate is. is. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then with the software, I mean, if you want to manage it all, just give us the quick wrap of how that works via your iPad. How you're monitoring the whole sure. thing. Sure. Uh, so the and why you'd want to do that. Great thing about our system is um, it is smart. Microinverters are actually sending not only power over the power line but also data over yep. the power line. They send that to Envoy, which is our gateway device, mm -hmm. and uh, that can either connect up to the internet or you can connect to it locally and see information about your system. Uh, we have a mobile app that's tailored specifically for consumers to be really easy to understand and give them insight about how they're using energy. Yeah, hour, hour by hour or minute by minute. Down, yeah. down to the minutes, yeah. yeah. And, and that also gives um, Enphase and the electricity companies the ability to, to see with great um, accuracy how the whole network is working and they can rebalance things from their end as well. Uh, that's definitely a potential application of the technology. Yeah. We are, of course, very careful about consumer privacy. Yeah, sure. And so you were going to add something? Well, I say, you know, in addition to you know all of those wonderful features, one thing that you get when you uh, when you work with the Enphase Energy Solution is that it's a system that will grow and is capable of evolving with you. It's scalable. It's scalable. It's uh, it's adaptable as your energy needs change. Sure. So. Uh, you know, we are expecting that these sorts of energy investments are, you know, decade-long, multi-decade-long types of investments. And so you can't expect, you know, the solution that's right for your energy needs now is going to be the same energy solution that you need five years from now, 10 years from now, sure. even 20 years from now. What we've done is architected this solution in order that, to be capable of um, being adjusted, being uh, augmented, added to, uh, scaled in various different ways, have its behavior change as needed, um, as your as your needs change. So, just the last question, Eileen. Any, any final messages for, from you for it, the people that are watching to you know, to learn more, to give it a go, to anything? What would you like to tell them? <laughs> final thing. Well, first of all, nphase.com. Yep, go yep. there, check it out, um, and then I would say, really, um, this is technology that's mainstream it really can be for everybody solar and now with storage can be for everybody and really encourage folks to try and check it out and see if it's right for them so sure. thomas any message yeah I, the same thing you know enphase.com slash au yeah uh, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 i would say you know encourage everyone to to do your homework you know, we encourage everybody to do your research, compare all the different options out there, um, learn as much as you can about your own consumption patterns and your own energy needs, uh, because what we're really after is to get people the kind of energy solution that they want and that they need you know, specifically tailored to them. And I'm going to go one better. Yep, yep. <laughs> Enphase.com slash AU slash register yep. is a site we've set up specifically for homeowners. If you're interested in the solution, you can go there uh, to receive updates, get notifications, be connected with installers. Okay. Thank you very much to you both and best of luck. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you.